Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden. Golden Falls. Golden, what if? Whatever you want to call me. And I am back. I am back with a brand new series. What if Deku had a supreme IQ quirk? I believe the person that suggested this was Kingpin. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. Um, but I do have a poll on my on my community tab that obviously and this was chosen out of the four options I believe it was kingpin. I hope it was I'm not gonna go check. I'm not gonna go check that right now, but um, But yeah shout out to them for suggesting this and I think this is gonna be definitely fun And I want to do something slightly different with this um, Especially him being uh, well, obviously he's gonna be a genius, right? So yeah, I'm not gonna waste any more of your time and we're gonna get right into the what if. Let's get it. The story begins with a young boy by the name of Azuku Midoriya. Azuku Midoriya was extremely smart as a child. At the age of four, he was reading, writing, and doing various other things at a college level. He was so smart that he was able to analyze his own tendencies and figure out what his quirk was before they could even go to the doctors. Inko, his mother, was very hesitant about putting Azuku into all these advanced classes, but once she noticed how intelligent her son was, she gave in. By the age of six, Azuku finished college, and he, ha he got a doctorate in engineering physics and even artificial intelligence. Azuku was so smart that many support courses in different hero and different hero like high schools were reaching out for him to apply. But Inko decided that at this time it wouldn't be the best idea and he should make friends with people well his own age. So he would join UA's support course when he was 15. Azuku didn't really mind, and he got various offers to check out different agencies varying from Night Eyes to Fat Gums, and tons more. For Azuku though, he wanted to visit his old school to see his best friend Kachan, other known as Katsuki Bakugo, because since Azuku started doing college work, he didn't see him very much, if not at all. Zuku, who is about 8, went to the school that he was supposed to go to, but had had a visitor's pass instead of obviously being a student. He was allowed to sit in on his class, and then when they were given free time, he could talk to Bakugo. During that time, he approached Bakugo. Hey, Kachan! Bakugo turns and is shocked to see Azuku. Azuku, what, have you been, what have you been up to? Oh, my mom sent me to get a, well, better education. I'm actually done with school. Bakugo's eyes light up. Wow, Azuku, wait. Um, I want to show you my quirk. Bakugo starts showing his quirk without the teacher seeing, obviously not being allowed to do so. And Azuku is amazed and begins writing down everything he can about Bakugo's quirk. That is awesome, Kachan. You're going to be a great hero. They both talk for a little bit longer and Izuku ends up leaving, telling Kachan that he will see him at UA even if, well, they're not in the same class. Izuku with the time between his entrance into UA and the current time he and the current time he decided to start making support items for various people. Well, for instance like Bakugo, making his gauntlets a lot sooner than normal. But also multiple agencies began asking for his support items. And this, well, let's just say made him and Inko really rich. So they both moved into a big house and Izuku had his very own lab. Very similar to kind of like if you remember Iron Man's lab and stuff like that. He began what he believed to be the biggest prog project he has ever started. He wanted to make an exoskeleton that say basically would allow the crippled to walk. Inko is extremely surprised, thinking that Izuku would be making some sort of suit of armor that would help him fight villains. But what Inko didn't know is he kind of planned to do that as well, but he, ne he knew he needed the backing of UA before he actually started the project. When he was about 13, he was already a multi-millionaire 
and he began to get get known by pro heroes as this guru of sorts that he knew exactly what everyone wanted and needed. Yue realized this and told Izuku that they would be moving him and his mother to a, mo a more mm, secluded area, free of charge of course. But obviously that wouldn't matter anyways, but Izuku would have everything he had in his old house in, well, the new one. Inko qu quickly agreed, obviously just wanting her son to be safe at all times. Izuku, after finishing his exoskeleton project, he decided to work on something more than that more than that for, well, himself. He decided that a suit of armor wasn't really his style, and he was more into something, well, at a bigger range. He began working on his own AI, something that he would carry around him that would analyze any situation he was put into. He believed that having one genius is good, but what about having a genius and an AI built by that genius? After about two years, and well, two days before he started at UA, he actually finished the AI. He put a micro patch on the back of his head and a user interface showed up. Hello, Azuku. Hello, um, now what should I call you? Mm, how about Apollo? That sounds good. Yes, that sounds good to me, Izuku. Now, is there anything you would like me to do? Oh, nothing for now. But soon you will be helping the heroes. A lot. After two days, Izuku is obviously admitted into UA, and he begins searching for the support, the support class, but finds 1A. Oh, this is the hero course. I wonder if Kachan is in there. Izuku walks in, seeing Bakugo, arguing with some blue-haired kid. Come on, Kachan, arguing already? Bakugo turns and sees Izuku. Izuku, you are here? Are you in my class? No, 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 I'm in the support class. The blue haired boy tells him that he should leave then if he's in the support class and that this isn't right for a student of UA. Um, Izuku basically just ignores him and keeps talking to Bakugo until Aizawa comes in and Izuku begins to walk out as well. Have fun with Aizawa as your teacher. Have a good day, Izuku. The class is shocked that it seems like Izuku just casually knows the teachers, but Bakugo isn't really surprised because of the influence he has already like, put onto Hero Society, and he's only their age. Izuku arrives at the support class late, and Power Loader is talking. Oh, yeah, welcome, Midoriya. Please sit down. He sits next to a girl with pink hair, and some of the students begin to complain, saying why isn't he in trouble for being late. Power Loader is about to say something, but Izuku decides, well, to show them. Mr. Power Loader, uh, can I show them if you, if you may, if I may? Power Loader chuckles and tells him to come up. He does so and picks, picks someone out of the group. The guy walks up and Izuku puts something on his chest. Now, do me a favor, um, try to walk out the class. Huh? What are you talking about? Power Loader tells him that if he can make it out that door in 30 seconds, class is over. The boy smirks and runs, but seems to be back where he was in an instant. The class is confused, saying that he isn't even moving. Oh, he is moving. I just messed with the time that fluctuates around him. So he moves to the door, but it rewinds him back to where it started. Izuku pulls it off, and Power Loader say, says that the 30 seconds are now up. The class is shocked, but the girl by the name of Mei Hatsume says that she knows who this is, and that he's kind of become a legend for his support items. Oh, that's, that's very sweet. Thank you. Izuku sits down, and Power Loader goes on with his lesson, obviously making the point that Izuku is, well, far beyond this class. Class is over, but... Class is then over, and but Izuku stays, and the class asks why he isn't leaving. Oh, I already have all my credits for normal classes, as well as college credits, as well as I have two doctorates. <laughs> the, they basically all are shocked and ask why is he even here and he basically says that the support from UA allows him to do even more with his support items so it kind of is a win-win the class nods and they all leave Izuku begins working once again and after some time Aizawa actually enters the support class 
Azuku, uh, can I speak with you? Oh, yeah, I'm on the way. Midoriya walks out with Aizawa. Okay, so tomorrow All Might is coming. By the train my class. If you want, I don't mind if you join them. Oh, really? All Might? Awesome, I would love to join. Um, can I use my support items? Yeah, I mean, you can use whatever. Just let Power Loader know before. Azuku nods and heads back into the classroom. He tells Power Loader that, and obviously he says, it's fine. After some time, Mei Hatsume enters the class and runs up to Midoriya, asking for his help making her babies? I really hope you mean support items. Mei tilts her head and asks what else would she mean. Never mind. Um, what do you need as long as you don't blow me up? She shows him her brand new support items, which is stuff like her rocket boots and other things like that. He approaches them and starts working, and he adds something. I added a renewable power source, so while on a mission, it should be even easier to use. Mei is shocked and says that the rumors are true. He is a genius. Azuku chuckles, thanking, thanking her, but he says that it's only something minor and that she did the mass majority obviously on her own. After some more working, Azuku heads off back to his home and when he arrives, he goes into his lab and begins working on something for hero training the next day. He begins adjusting an exoskeleton that he made and, configure, and he configured it to be placed on the outside of his skin and to basically give him increased movement, strength, and various other abilities. Even being able to execute a mode where each part of his body would move on its own based on, well, a fighting situation. But this is still in the very early beginning stages in terms of development. The next day, Azuku arrives, checks in with Power Loader, and goes to Class 1A. He walks in and Tenya Ida tells him to leave and that he shouldn't be here. Azuku makes a chair appear by Bakugo's desk and he sits down, with the people who are there are actually pretty amazed at where he just poofed a chair from. Momo asks if he has a creation quirk and he says no, that he basically just shrunk the chair and regrew it using some technology he made um, when he was about like 8 years old. Also Mr. Ida, um, I will be attending your hero course class today, so if you don't want Aizawa to yell at you, maybe you should sit down. Ida um, kind of looks shocked and apologizes and sits down. Okay, problem children and Azuku. Today, you all will be having a different teacher, and he should be here, <clears throat> I think, right now. I am here, walking through the door like a normal person. The class shouts All Might's name, but Azuku just stares at him and tilts his head. Now all of you, get on your hero costumes. Azuku heads out of the class and goes to the ground Gamma, but begins talking to Apollo. Apollo, status check on All Might, please. All Might, number one hero, seems that he has a significant injury or damage to his respiratory system. Interesting. Is that too far, too far to fix? Of course not, with your intelligence. No need to flatter, Apollo. I am not, sir. Just stating facts. Azuku slightly laughs and heads toward where All Might is waiting. Azuku Midoriya, am I correct? The genius beyond his years. It's an honor, All Might, especially with that with coming from you. No need for formalities. You have helped many agencies and heroes already. Why, why choose to go to UA if you don't mind me asking? Well, because, um, I get UA support with technology, but also my mom wants me to, uh, make friends. All Might slightly laughs and tells him that makes sense. They both wait for the rest of the class to arrive, and they do so. Okay class, today we will be doing something pretty simple. It will be a 2 versus 2 sparring matches, and I will be making the teams. All Might announces the teams and says that team 1 is Bakugo and Midoriya, and they will fight Todoroki and Ida. Oh my, this is not going to be fair. Shota walks over slightly pushing him, saying not to underestimate him, and that he is just some support core student, not a hero student. Bakugo is about to back up Azuku, 
but Azuku says it's fine. The four of them head out to the ground and wait for the match to start. Apollo, please analyze. Apollo analyzes the entire battlefield and Azuku plans. Uh, Kachan, do you mind standing in front of me, please? Huh? Why? Todoroki is, well, going to start with a huge blast of ice. Pretty predictable, honestly. Um, I'm going to amplify your explosions, so they just shoot straight through it. Bakugo says that he has no idea how that will work, but he's game. The match starts and ice rushes at them. Zuku taps Bakugo's back, putting an exoske his exo exoskeleton on him as well. Uh, now Kachan. Bakugo blasts it and it shatters the ice and it sends Todoroki flying into a wall, knocked out. Azuku takes back the exoskeleton, putting it on himself instantly, kicking Ida as he runs in. The class stands there in shock. Shoto and Ida were knocked out in just seconds. Damn, Azuku. What the hell was that? A uh, little thing I made. I mean, initially for people who couldn't walk, but I adjusted it to be a tool for combat as well now. Bakuko is impressed, saying that it seems that he is putting those smarts to good use. Hey, what did you think I was doing with them? Bakuko laughs and they bring Ida and Shoto back to the class and Recovery Girl is called. The rest of the class finishes up their fights and the class is finally dismissed, but Azuku obviously wants to speak with All Might before he leaves. All Might, I actually have a question for you. What is it, young Midoriya? Well, how many doctors have you gone to about your injury? All Might is shocked and says that, well, he doesn't have one. Come on, All Might. You can be honest. I already know. All Might asks him to go to the teacher's lounge and, and All Might, and then when they get there, All Might untransforms. And he shows his horrible injury and says that every doctor, scientist, and everyone couldn't help. I'll do it. All Might looks completely confused. I'll heal you. I mean, shouldn't it be too hard? All Might is shocked, but thinks it's some joke. And Izuku says that he is serious and that keeping the symbol of peace is important to society, so he will make that his next project. And he already actually knows how to start it. Azuka then leaves and All Might is just standing there in shock. That this kid really just guaranteed his recovery? Yes, he may be a genius, but All Might swore that recovering from this would be impossible. Azuku heads home and begins working on a special gel that would basically have nanobots that would reconstruct and reform his respiratory system. And it, it should fix his injury in a matter of days, but Azuku realizes that, well, it will take him at least a week to finish it, so he stops for the night and heads to bed. The next day, he heads to school and arrives at, basically at his class until he begins to get an alert in his interface. Apollo, is everything fine? No, it seems that the USJ is currently getting attacked by villains, numbering close to 100. Azuku immediately tells Power Loader the situation and they scatter to gather the heroes. Azuku is forced to stay, but this allows for the pros to get to the USJ a lot quicker than normal, and Shigaraki and the Nomu are stopped before anything crazy could actually happen, and Aizawa came out pretty scotch-free. After Class 1A got back to the main ground, of UA, Azuku was thanked by the class, Aizawa, and various pro heroes. Oh, no need to thank me, just paying attention. They all ask how did he know and he says that he will build an AI to assist him and his name is Apollo and he is very good at what he does. And due to the villain attack though, being halted so quickly, Shigaraki and All for One, the main leaders of the League of Villains, began taking notice of the impact that Azuku was having. Due to this, they began paying a little bit more attention in terms of the UA Sports Festival. All the classes are given three days off due to the incident, but the day then came and the famous UA Sports Festival was about to begin. All the classes are announced and Azuku obviously walks out with the support course and he is, well, kind of a celebrity, being known by a lot of people. And even girls begin cheering for him saying how good looking he is. 
He kind of laughs at this and may ask what's so funny. Well, I guess money makes me more handsome than I actually am to these girls. Mei kind of laughs as well with him and Midnight begins to announce the UA Sports Festival. She says that they that she will spin spin a wheel to see the first event. The wheel spins and it lands on something they haven't seen in a long time called Course Royale. The first event will be within their own course and only 10 people will go on to the next round from each course being business, general, support, and hero of course. Everyone is shocked but Izuku sees this as a good thing because frankly most of the support course wouldn't make it out anyways. Um, basically so this would allow them to have more people. The support course is the first to be called to the stage for the battle royale and Midnight says that the last 10 people in the ring go on. Now begin! And that is the end of part 1 of What If Deku Had a Supreme IQ Quirk. If you enjoyed, make sure to smash the like button and hit that sub button and also comment down below. I mean, what y'all enjoy about this part? Any suggestions for the future what ifs? Um, and what do you want to see Izuku do in future parts? And that's about it. I'm going to keep it the little outro sweet and short. I hope all y'all enjoyed, like I said, and have an amazing day. Later.